Grand Line Bound, baby. Chapter 1096. I'm late, but I'm great. Let's go. Busy week for your boy. Let's get it, though. All right, the cover page has Zoro getting his ass whooped by a bunch of chihuahuas at the game of musical chairs. We even see a little scratch man of poo chihuahua. Fucking thing. Let's get it, though. Mix it up, puppy. To the real good shit, man. Let's go. The chapter opens up at God Valley. You know, at the Hunger Game competitions these fucking pieces of shit are hosting. Ha! We find out that there are 150 little rabbits. That's what these shitheads are calling these hunties. Plus, there's 13 super rare little rabbits that everybody's claiming. And you know, along with the additional 10,000 civilians from God Valley. And we get a good look at some of the hunters in this tournament, including some of the Holy Knights. We also see the mysterious six chests that they keep in the middle of the island that contain these rare devil fruits that are supposedly the main prize of this tournament. And it cuts to Kong talking to Garp, trying to get his ass to go to God Valley. And Garp's like, eh, fuck that, I'm good. And he's like, that's their punk-ass fault. I told him not to steal that... Shit from Hachinosu. You poke the hive and you get stung. Wonder what the hell he's talking about. We'll find out. Hey, you do know Rogers is going to be there, right? Bitch, I'm on my way. You should have opened up with that. Say less. Let's go. We see a quick shot of Hachinosu. We get word that the Rock Pirates have already been dispatched. They're already set sailing. Let's get it. On to a beautiful shot of Egghead. I mean, God Valley. Uh, listen, guys. I just want my credit. When we find out that my theory is correct, okay? Remember, you heard it here first, damn it. Stop playing with me. We see slaves getting murked left and right. Bam! Hunger Games shit, right? They're getting purged. Should I even say that on YouTube? Purge? Oh, well, I said it. We see Ivankov telling everybody that in three weeks' time, every slave and civilian is going to be gone, perished, deceased. He's like, yo, they lied to us, man. These celestial dragons, they fucking lied to us, bro. All right, they told us we're going to be free if we survive this little bullshit-ass game. But in all their hunts, there have been zero survivors, these pieces of shit. They speculate on why they do that. They want to give these slaves and civilians a chance of hope, or the thought of hope, I mean. We see that piece of shit, St. Garling, and he's, he's honestly doing his thing, man. He's out here fucking scoring these points, you know? You feel me? And it looks like bro is writing Karu's evil cousin or some shit. Like, <laughs> fucking steampunk Karu. <laughs> Bro's angry. Gothic. I call him Gothic Karu. <laughs> now, apparently, St. Garling is going after the higher value rabbits. Uh, but that still makes you a piece of shit, St. Garling. I hate you. I don't like you already. I don't know why. I don't fucking like you. You're a Chad, though. It cuts back to Ivankov getting free from his chains thanks to some shark fish men. And bro looks like if Bartolomeo and Arlong had a baby. <laughs> now for the MVP of the fucking chapter, in my opinion. Ginny talks about the prizes and how they could be important for their escape off that island. And it does. She is absolutely right. She said out of the two of these prizes, one of them we know is Kuma's pawpaw fruit that Kuma will eventually get. The second is Kaido's Devil Fruit. That's supposedly in the strongest class of Devil Fruits. Whatever the hell that means. And honestly, that's pretty interesting. But that doesn't intrigue me. What intrigues me is the fact that Ginny knows so much about Devil Fruits. You know what I mean? I'm like, who the hell is this little girl to know this much about Devil Fruits? Now, the problem is, these Devil Fruits are kept at the very center of the island. But Jenny says she's a fucking boss. Don't trip. She says she's a pro thief and a wiretapper. And we also see her using this super rare Den Den machine. Never been seen before in the story. I'm like, whoa, who is this girl, man? Is she like the fucking James Bond of One Piece or some shit? Not only that, she is the one that leaked all the information to the outside world about this Hunger Games shit at God Valley. You know? And this probably makes Ginny one of the most important characters in this whole God Valley incident. She's probably the reason why Rogers is on his way over there. She's probably the reason why the Rocks Pirates are over there. And whoever the fuck else showed up. 
Kuma tells Jenny and Ivankov that he can help with this mission. Hey, I can help, guys. I'm a big-ass tank, you know what I mean? I mean, look, I got this big-ass arrow in my back. I could, I could absorb damage. And Ivankov's like, alright, then let's fucking get it then. Let's keep it going. Now for the hype. You guys ready for the hype? Hype type shit. Let's go. We see the rocks pull out to the island. Yo, this is massive. We already know who the rocks pirates are for most part. But it's fucking crazy that we see Shiki the gold lion. And we see them and they're all talking shit to each other. Remember, they never really got along. They never worked as a team. Everybody was on some I'm a lone wolf type shit. We also see the Roger Pirates pull up. Shit is about to go down. Gar pulls up as well. Shit, everybody. As soon as Gar pulls up, man, that bro, that bro wants to scrap. He's like, where the fuck is Roger, man? I'm here to beat some fucking ass. Ivankov and Kuma end up getting to the Devil Fruits somehow. And they're about to eat them when Ivankov gets attacked by one of the contestants. A contestant that kind of looks like... Peril Sparrow's mom or some shit, even though we know Big Mom is his mom. This chick kind of looks like Peril Sparrow to me. I don't know why. Ivankov's like, yo, Kuma, eat that shit, yo. Kuma eats it. Fuck yeah, that's a win for us, bitch. Let's go. Bam, Saturn hops out and knocks that boy Kuma with that Wi-Fi hockey. Fucking bops him. Bop. Saturn is sitting there talking shit. He's like, yo, you could either live as a slave or perish, bro. What's good? What you want to do? And Kuma's like, yo, fuck you. I'm going to be just like that Nika, bro. I'm going to save all my folks, man. And Saturn's like, all right, bitch. And you're going to end up just like your folk. And on this fateful day, we'll have to continue on another fucking chapter. Because why would Oda show us all this shit, you know? Why, why would he show us everything that happens in God Valley? Why? Why wouldn't? Why would he? We skip to some time after. Kuma, Ivankov, and Jenny have already escaped whatever the fuck happened at God Valley. Okay? We see them and they're in the Sorbet Kingdom talking about Big News Morgan and how he's a fucking buster. I guess whatever happened at God Valley, they switched it up to make it look like only Garp was the hero. And even though I'm pretty damn sure Roger did a lot of shit in that island to help. I'm even willing to bet that Rox was probably there helping somehow as well. I don't fucking know. I'm willing to bet that. Or maybe he could have just been trying to get whatever the fuck they stole from Hachinosu. We see Kuma praying. And most likely to the god Nika. And he's feeling bad for not saving more people during this incident. And Ivanka tells him, hey, yo, bro, you saved over fucking 500 people, bro. Calm down. You did your best. And, of course, he most likely saved all those people using his devil fruit powers. Jenny tells him that so many people cried tears of gratitude because of what he did. And Ivanka even calls his hands the hands of liberation. Fucking love it. And I also love the fact that God Valley looks like two praying hands. Speaking of religion, we also see that they're living in a church. And I wonder if Mother Caramel will come into play during all of this shit. Ivankov ends up telling both of them that he's going to take off to live his best life. He's like, yo, I got to go, you guys. I got to go live my best life, you know, Okama style type shit. Let's go. Ginny says she's staying with Kuma. And we see a couple panels of Kuma and Ginny living together. Some kids pick on Kuma. Of course, Ginny whoops their asses. And of course, Kuma heals them using his devil fruit powers. The chapter ends with them crying happy tears because their bellies are full. Final thoughts, baby. What? Y'all already know what it is. Let's go. Final thoughts on this chapter. Chapter was pure. How do you say? What's the word for hype? Do it again, please. Stay off the weed. It's a busy week, though, man. The boy, it's a busy week for the captain, man. You know, he got that whole Alabasta arc review. Go check that out when it drops on Monday. Shang, shang, shang. Yeah. Yeah. Shang, shang, shang.
You couldn't stay off the weed. Yeah, this chapter was pretty dope. Let's talk about some final thoughts though type shit. Let's go. I want to talk about Kuma first. Kuma. Like, how do you guys think Kuma saved everybody from the island? Like, do you... It, it was said he saved like 500 plus people, right? Do you think he was just fucking... Voop, 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 voop. Just teleporting everybody the fuck out of there? Because the way it, Jenny made it seem, it seemed like they were crying. A whole bunch of people were crying. So, so, did he like teleport just so many fucking people all at once? You know, that'd be fucking wild. He's like, all right, all right, guys, let's go. Let's get it. Let's get the fuck on. <laughs> MVP that bitch, yo. MVP. MV fucking P. When they were sitting there talking about Morgan and how Morgan is spinning the story to show that only Garp was the hero, we can already infer Roger was some type of hero there, too. Like, there was no fucking way he was just there. Just to fucking fight Garp or Rocks or whoever the fuck, you know what I mean? And not only that, the story was spun to us from the beginning that they went there to battle... They went there to battle Rocks, right? Garp and Roger teamed up to battle Rocks. All we know is Oda is keeping that God Valley incident. He's keeping all that info tucked away. He doesn't want us to know too much. That's crazy how they were talking about Garp being the hero of this fucking island when he didn't even want to go. He didn't even want to go. What if Rox was out there saving people? What if, cause we don't, we haven't seen Rox yet. We've seen Shiki, okay? But no sign of Rox, no sign of Bogart, wherever the fuck that guy is, okay? It's fucking big chilling somewhere else. The one thing about Garp, when this chapter dropped, there was a lot of people talking about how Garp is probably a piece of shit, blah, 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 because he knew about what the Celestial Dragons are doing, blah, blah, fucking blah. There's no doubt in my mind he knew what the fuck was going on, but there's no doubt in my mind that tells me that, he, like, just the fact that he knows, like, what the fuck was he supposed to do? Like, what the hell could he have done? He is the more logical thinker of the marines right and so he's like how the fuck am i gonna take out the fucking celestial dragons and the world government by myself just beating their asses like i'm just gonna die that ain't logical so instead let me form this fucking let me form this little rogue group inside of the marines let's take these motherfuckers from the inside out that doesn't even sound right let's destroy this bullshit ass system from within. Yeah, baby. Let it melt your chest. It's Garp's is Garp, man. He's more logical. He's probably more like, what the fuck am I going to do over there for? What the fuck am I going to do? I don't know. Back to the Kuma thing. Is it possible that this motherfucker could have teleported the whole fucking island? The whole island. Or at least half the island. Half that island. I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just reaching you guys. I really want God Valley to be egghead, man. I really want that theory to be true, guys. Okay? I really want that, right? There's just something about those fucking panels when you put it right by fucking side. It's like crazy shit, yo. I'm going to wrap this shit up. I got more Alabasta to edit. And then this new fucking chapter just came out. I haven't even read that shit, yo. I haven't even read the new... I haven't even read... I haven't even read 1097 yet. That's wild. That's fucking wild. I feel late. Like, this week has been wild, though, man. So, catch me smoking the next one, guys. Let's get it. Let's take these motherfuckers from the inside out.